around the world. It's Learn Ubuntu Live, presented by LearnUbuntu.org, with your host, Tom Judge. Here's a test to see if you learned anything in this chapter. You see this opening graphic slide in our ringmaster? Compare that to one at the end and see if by the end of the chapter you understand why we like the way it looks on the closing rather than the opening slide. As you see there are colors and formats of colors and file formats and if you're new to this at first it can be a little confusing but we're going to try and demystify some of that in this chapter by the details and in this presentation by an overview. So, here's the popular image formats that you run into as you're doing website production. GIF, .gif, normally it's lowercase .gif. It had been the more popular type. I would say the ping is either caught up or passed by now. It only supports 256 colors, which is somewhat of a limitation and if you're fussy, it's not free open source. It actually belongs to uh, a, a very old computer WAN connection company, CompuServe. It's lossless compression. It compresses about one third of the original file size is saved. It's low resolution photos, line art grass. GIF animations are very popular for a while also. You can still use them. JPEG is mainly intended for photographs, not necessarily line art. It is, uh, it supports over 16 million colors, which distinguishes it from line art. It's a lossy compression, so be aware that if you make something from a native format, such as uh, the GIMP native format into a JPEG, you may, you may not have all the information there. Keep your original. Progressive JPEG shows up as a broken link on some browsers. I think that's pretty much been sorted out. Um, and JPEGs, very importantly, do not support transparencies. If you need a transparent image, you will not use a JPEG. The PNG is the more popular format. Portable Network Graphics is the acronym PNG stands for. Um, it's becoming more popular on the web. It combines some of the best features of GIF and JPEG in that, yes, it does support transparencies, yes, it supports a lot more than 256 colors, and it does compress very well. It uses a lossless compression, and as I said here, some of this information I've had around this courseware for a while, the ping, if not by now, ultimately probably will replace the GIFs, and that's what I use mostly. Bitmap is an old Windows format, .bmp. It's, uh, a lot of browsers tend to support, not recommended. It's kind of a large file, not very efficient. Now, there's some terms we need to become familiar with, and we'll cover these in the details of the lab. The alpha channel is what makes the background transparent. Okay? The alpha channel cuts the hole that the video fills, basically. In some cases, <coughs> depending on your alpha channel, it may actually work as a key if you're playing with keys. RGB are standard red, green, and blue. RGBA is an RGB with an alpha channel. And CMYK uses the color differences, not the primary colors, but the secondary colors to store the color imagery of, this, of the image, the picture. Hey, don't forget between mono and black and white, color and black and white, grayscale. In photography, a grayscale means there's no color. As you can see, this picture has no color to begin with. Ha <laughs> ha. That's me playing Easter Bunny. Compression. We need to understand compression if we're going to be dealing with images. Compression is all about how much do you compress versus how much do you lose. It's the same old story. It hasn't changed. Okay? So in context, it generally means making the image small, like a zip file, or a WinZip, if you're familiar with that, or a GZip. Lossless compression means it retains all the data without losing any quality of signal. Lossy compression does lose some quality of signal. Generally, a good Kodak that makes this compression, 
and compressions really are made with codecs. It's a way of compressing and encoding the signal. A lossy compression will lose some picture information. Will it be visible to the user? That's where your judgment comes in as a web developer. Here I show you, and in the labs, this is the page from one of the labs, an example. The same file stored as different formats. You can see as a BMP, it's 261.4 kilobytes. As a GIF, it's only 44 kilobytes. As a JPEG, it's 66. And as a ping, it's 150 kilobytes, roughly half of what the BMP would be with virtually no loss of quality and the ability to use an alpha channel. Sounds like a winner to me. Now, as part of this uh, chapter and the labs, I'm going to show you a little bit about the GIMP image editor. Between GIMP and Inkscape, you should be able to handle all your different types of graphic images. Now, raster graphics. There are, there are two basic types of graphics, raster and vector. And it's very simple to see the difference. Here's a raster. This is an image. All I did was take that same image and make it that big. And if you can't see the pixelization, don't do web graphics. Here's a more extreme example. Vector graphics, on the other hand, are defined mathematically. Their sharpness is maintained when they're resized, and the file size is constant no matter how large or small you choose to display it. So if you need to save something in vector graphics after working on it, you'll have to use Inkscape. And here's an example of Inkscape with our little vector graphics image open in it. We have, by the way, if you want to play around with images, there's a whole student uh, graphics section, free open source graphic images for you to play with and experiment with. We always encourage you to use all the resources that we provide on the website for you, such as the glossary of IT terms, the, uh, the uh, GIF, the, uh, I'm sorry, the PDF library, and also we have the... Um, the, the uh, student access to the uh, images, the graphic images. There's tons of graphic images there, and they're all public domain, free, open source. You can use them. Feel free to experiment. That's how you learn. So again, we, we mentioned these earlier. <coughs> the uh, common image file formats, the BMP, which we do not recommend using, the GIF, which is sort of legacy, the JPEG, the PNG. We also have, there are other formats you may run into, and usually uh, GIMP is pretty good at opening almost any format you can throw at it. Uh, PCX.tiff.psd is the Adobe Photoshop. You may see an XCF, which is the native format for the GIMP editor. If you want to save all of your information, you save it as an XCF. That is no compression. SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, EPS, Encapsulated Postscript. DFX is an AutoCAD uh, graphic, WF is a Windows Meta file. At some point, you may encounter some or all of these in your career, so it's nice to know what they are. Now, all this is nice. We have our graphic ready. Now we got to put it on the web page, and to do so, we use the wonderful image tag. Very short and sweet. IMG. Of course, the image tag by itself isn't much use without its attributes. Source defines the path to the image. We just learned about hyperlinks. This works very similarly. To, instead of it being a hyperlink to a web page, it's a hyperlink to a graphics image that will be downloaded in the background and displayed in the user's browser. We can also specify the width and the height and an alternate text in case the browser doesn't display graphics. And we have a little lab just on that coming up also. A border if you want and the alignment in relation to text, which is somewhat hokey, but mostly works. Here's an example of an image tag. We specify the source. We specify the height and the width and the alternate text that's displayed if the browser can't display the image. Now remember, if, if, if you goof, and you um, put the path in wrong, the image won't display. But this will display and help you troubleshoot. Uh, we have some color examples. We show you some charts. I believe we download the uh, web graphics zip file. 
Uh, we have that available, I think, on our student downloads. I also provide a link for that. You can use that as a reference for yourself for standard colors. And we show you the hexadecimal as well as the RGB values of these common colors. I like this slide. I found this somewhere on the internet. Notice this shows you how you mix the primary colors together to make secondary colors and also white because RGB at full level, all three channels will be white. Here's our yellow. Here's our magenta, which you can't see because my pointer is magenta. And here's our cyan color. And of course, green, blue, and red. This gives a good visual understanding of how colors blend together. We show you in some of these lab exercises, and we get to get some hands-on, which is how we really learn how to use the GIMP color picker. And the nice thing about the GIMP color picker is it doesn't just pick colors in GIMP. It'll pick any color on your screen. So if you see a website and see a color you like, you want that color, figure out what it is, use the GIMP color picker magic wand to grab it. Here in the labs, we show you these charts that show you uh, the relation between a, a decimal number, a hexadecimal number, and a, a binary value for colors. We're mostly interested in the hexadecimal. We use that a lot. And we show you how to use that. We show you also how to use the little calculator. We, re we use the calculator in our beginning of this course with TCPIP to convert decimal to hexadecimal and binary to figure out ipses. Here we see it. We can use it to figure out colors. Now, important in our lab exercise, the first thing, as usual, is the prep. We have to download these images that we use for this and in the following chapter on image maps. So there's two or three graphic images we have to download. After we download them in our second lab exercise, we, it, we use the swordfish GIF. And you see it there. And obviously this is leading up to a demonstration of how and why it's nice to have that alpha channel for your graphics. In lab exercise 3 of 10, we show you how to use the GIMP image editor to um, add an alpha channel and make it transparent. And then we show you how to, we, we actually use a different name, I think we call it Swordfish GIF, Swordfish 2 that GIF or something. We keep our original, we save it as a different name. And there's our Swordfish with a transparent background, except for the ugly color background, it looks pretty nice. And the fourth exercise, we, we download the web color zip, which shows some HTML examples of color charts. And we also delve a little deeper into the GIMP color picker tools and how to use all the elements of the GIMP color picker. And then we move on to lab exercise five, where we start to specify some colors of the web page elements themselves. And here we have a body color background and a text color background. We don't necessarily pick good colors, we pick colors to illustrate how it works. Lab exercise 5 of 10 gets a little interesting. We just for giggles, we show you how to download the, the text only web browser links, which is handy if you ever try to troubleshoot something from a server, that's all you've got, you've got no browser. So. And then what we do is we, we turn the images off. We also show you how to turn images off in Firefox. And then what happens is you will see, I'm sorry, I'll go back here. Then what happens is you will see um, the text instead of the image. Can I show you that here? Let's see. Yes, here we see. It shows you the text of the image instead of the image because we turned images off in Firefox. So we do that and the, and the text only link browser links. And X, I believe it's called the Links Browser. So, then we show you also that everything works together in HTML, as we, as we keep stressing. The, um, the image we made, we can create a hyperlink out of that by simply uh, nesting the image tag inside of an anchor tag. And then we add another, at the same time, I believe we're also adding another image, a little rooster, which is already a transparent GIF. And then we get to download some images from the uh, NASA site about with the space shuttle. 
We have some images to download. I believe the images are right on our web server also. And we're going to learn about thumbnails. So here we download the images, then we use, um, we scale the image down using GIMP. In eight, lab exercise eight, we show you how to download the Image Magic and the Image plugin via Nautilus browser so you can really easily and quickly resize an image without even having to open GIMP. So we show you that in lab exercise eight. We show you the right click and resize. Then in exercise nine, we start working with these images that we downloaded and learn how to use a thumbnail to make the link and the full size image to see the picture. In lab exercise 10, we then demonstrate some alignment of text in relation to that thumbnail image. I'll show you in a couple of different subsections of this exercise 10 how we move the text in relation to the image by changing those. In reality, when you get into the real world and learn CSS, you're going to do more of this stuff with CSS. We want to show you the basics. So now, here's our closing slide. Remember what we told you? Ooh, what is different about the webmaster in this slide? If you understand what is different about the webmaster in this slide, after performing the labs and doing the readings, then you learned something about web graphics. So that was our presentation on web graphics. Perform all the labs, read all the readings, do the homework assignments, and you will understand why the ringmaster looks better in our closing slide. Portions of this program were pre-recorded.